Hello everyone and this is a tutorial on how to rasterize attributes in the new COPS using VEX. Okay, so the tutorial itself is like two minutes but I want to explain the reason you need to do that. Okay, uh, because uh, there's already a rasterize uh, node inside of COPS so why do you want to use VEX to do it? Okay, so uh, what I was trying to do uh, and then a lot of people on Facebook and Twitter sort of helped me out is I just wanted to create dirt based on curvature. Okay, so I have like the setup is pretty simple. I have like my test rubber toy and uh, I gave it some subdivisions because the curvature is being done using the measure curvature node and uh, that requires, you know, there has to be enough geometry for it to work. I hope they put in like a curvature node directly inside COPS so then it will be at texture level so you're not you're not dependent on you know geometry resolution anyway so we have the measure curve so i added normals and i have measure curvature which we can visualize from here so as a visualize output there you go so let's say we want to take like these green lines or whatever and then multiply them with a noise map that is where i started to face problems so let's take a cop net and i'm going to jump in here and I'm going to just set this up. So I'll take a preview material and I'm going to take a SOP import and we'll bring in the geometry. So we'll bring in out geo and that goes in there. So we're visualizing this. And then uh, I just want to bring in, let's say the curvature map. So what I can do again is I'll just duplicate this and I'll like I'll minimize it. I'll do control C, control V. And so first this goes into, uh, you need to bring it in at, uh, you know, uh, so you need to bring in the data based on UVs. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take something called rasterize setup. And this will change the space from position to UVs. Okay, so you can just plug this in and you'll see like, you know, it's bringing it in based on the UVs. Okay, and then I can put it into rasterize geometry. And then this will, this brings in everything that we want. Okay, so we can just... So we can just create a couple of these here. So I want to bring in the concavity and this will be mono and we want to bring in convexity. And maybe we also want to bring in the normals. So that will be N and we want to bring in the UV data. So that will be uh, UV. So we have everything here, like, and we can visualize these. So you can, this is the position and that is the uh, concavity and the normals. So the problems that you start, you can pretty much start seeing them immediately, right? So if I, if let's say if I take the concavity and plug it into base color and now it looks fine, uh, this is too dark. So let's put in the convexity and there you go. You see that seam over there? Yeah, that's your problem. And this happens with other things as well. So let's say if I if I take a fractal noise. Now you can't take a fractal noise because this is this is flowing based on the UVs. So that is going to show you a seam. So if you wanted to f uh, flow based on you know object uh, position, so you can take something called as a fractal noise three D. Okay, but the fractal noise three D uh, needs your object position data to come in. So that is pretty simple because uh, the rasterize setup has something called original position. So I can just take this and I'll replace the P with uh, original P and then I can plug this into my position. And if I plug in the noise here into base color, it's fine, like the noise is flowing, but you zoom in and you start seeing a seam again. Now this is, uh, the resolution is 1K, but even if you go all the way up to 4K, you will still see a seam. So we need to figure out a way to bring this in without any issues. Now there are a couple of options that were given to me, like on Facebook, it was, uh, hold on. Yeah, Facebook, there was Yaniv Gorali who sort of mentioned this note called extrapolate boundaries, which works pretty decently like if you take extrapolate boundaries what it does is it just sort of expands your your uv map okay your uv island so what i can do is i can just take this and it needs two things the source will be whatever you want to expand and then the fill area you can just bring in the alpha and then if you plug this in it will see it tries to improve a bit you have to sort of play around with it 
like uh, just take the edge offset like keep it to zero okay and then just lower it a little bit till it sort of starts to blend in you can also lower the threshold and the edge padding so it does its job but not as well as you would hope for it to do yeah there you go so the threshold so now it's better it's much better like you can see like it's taken care of it enough but you can still see a seam like especially like if i take the contrast and increase it there you go you can see the seam pretty well there's also another node called smooth fill which makes everything seem fine you know like if i look at the extrapolate boundaries uh if i just plug this in directly into my base color like the thing is it looks fine here but when you plug it into your noise map you start seeing the seam so if we take the smooth fill and the process is the same you take the original position into source and the alpha into the fill area and if we plug that in again it looks fine but the minute you plug it into your fractal noise it starts to give the same issues and uh, even the uv's have problems right like if you bring in the uv's here you'll see like there you go okay you have like this massive line over here and if we plug in the uv's there and we visualize that it looks better okay but again like if you plug this into a map you will you might start seeing issues so how do you resolve this okay so the final solution came from falcon savetra who sort of sent me this which was uh, he just said you know you, it's the best thing to do is you rasterize it using vex and that brings it in without any issues now i don't understand vex i sort of suck at it so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy paste this so what he's using is he's using xyz distance and prim uv which uh, basically sort of pick up data from your geometry based on sort of like a distance yeah so if you just go to youtube and do a basic search for like you know houdini xyz distance you'll find like a bunch of these so if you want to understand you can just go through this i am not going to try and do it because i don't understand it so i'm just going to copy paste the code okay so uh, the point being like instead of doing this for rasterize just use the wrangle and you will have zero issues okay so i'm just going to come in here to my other vex setup and just copy like the first four lines is what i need so i'm just going to copy this and i'll show you what the set, how to set this up okay so i'm just going to get rid of like uh let's like, let's keep these and we'll duplicate this much so control c control v and i'll just show you how this works okay so what you need to do is you have your geometry and you have your rasterize setup which is fine then uh, you take a wrangle node and you also need like as many attributes as you want to import you will need like an empty layer because that empty layer sort of feeds into the wrangle and then that sort of populates it so uh, what you need is just type in layer and just get an empty layer okay and here you specify what it should be so we want to bring in the original position so that's an rgb value so set this to rgb and then within the wrangle node uh, you need two things okay like at ba bare minimal okay which is one is the attribute that you want to bring in like you need to declare it over here and you need the geometry okay so here we need rgb and this should be called original p and then uh, the second is the geometry which will be input index is 1 so you plug in the geometry here and you plug in the layer into the original p and then you come into wrangle and then we're just going to copy paste that so what we had done which is okay it's screwed up hold on a second let me go back yeah, so i'm just going to take this and control c okay and control v so uh, what it's doing is you're declaring like a in a primitive and your uv's and then you do the x y z distance and then here you sort of just bring it in so we need to bring in the original position which is a vector so i'm just going to change that so v at original p and this is the geometry one is the geometry the second is which attribute you want to bring in so our attribute is called original p this can be the, the first one can be called anything that you want okay but this like inside the inverted commas is the name of the attribute and then you want to bring it in from all the primitives and 
the UVs that you've declared. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So if you've done this right, and I click here, we should see, now you can immediately see a huge difference, right? So when we rasterize here, it's showing it to you as islands, right? So if I look at original PC, it looks like this. But when we rasterize it here, it sort of fills up the entire sort of page. And if I plug this into fractal noise, this will give me a much better result. This will give me the result that I want. Which is if you come in here, see, there you go. No seams whatsoever, you know, like nothing. Even if you increase the contrast or whatever, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. So you replace it with this and you can immediately see the difference that you're getting. See, so this is like, so this is, this is fine, but there you go. See, you can see that line over there and you replace it with this guy and no line. And you can bring in all of your values like this. Okay. So if I take this and then I can just sort of increase, like, let's say I also want to bring in the convexity. Okay, so I can just uh, add in another value here. Okay. And this will be mono and this will be convexity. Duplicate your layer. So we need like one more. So control C, control V. This layer will be mono. And that goes into convexity. And all you have to do is just duplicate this. So this last line do control C, control V. And just type in convexity and and this will be a float and there you go so if i take this and i plug it in see there is no seam here like which if when you look at the convexity from this value like there is a seam so yeah this is the best, like, and you can bring in everything here. So even if you want to bring in the UVs here, we can bring in the UVs, right? So if I just plug in one more, I set it to UV, we will call it UV. And do the same thing. So just do control C, control V. And this is UV and UV. And this is a vector. And plug this in and you'll see the difference. See, like actually here's, here's the interesting thing. Like if I look at it this way and I look at the UVs, see, this is how the UVs look when it's brought in via VEX. And this is how the UVs look when you bring it in from like your rasterize. Okay. And then even if you do a smooth fill, it sort of fills it in this way. Like, because it's just sort of trying to blend between data. So it just, it's fine. But like, this is a very huge difference between, you know, what should be and what we are getting. So I hope side effects, side effects implements this as like an HDA and so we can just use it. But um, I think the simplest option for you right now is we can just take this and maybe just drag it onto your shelf set and just reuse it. You know, like if I just take this, let's let, let me just try this. I'll do a new shelf. Hold on. Can we just do a new shelf set here? Yeah. New shelf. Okay. And then I can just take this this much and drag it over there and we'll call it uh, rasterize or rasterize wrangle. Yeah. So if I just come in here and I click that, did you do anything? There you go. It made it. Yeah, there it is. So then you just change it to whatever you want and it'll be fine. Actually, it seems like I don't need the Hold on, let me just check this. Let, what if I get rid of these? Because I didn't check that, hold on. Yeah, okay. Uh, you don't need the, the layer input. I just sort of followed what he had done, but you don't need the layer input. So forget the layer input, you know, just, even if you just leave it like this, it's fine. As long as you're inputting the geometry, everything else is okay. All right, so that's pretty much it. So this is how you can use VEX to rasterize attributes and get a much better result. Okay, so if you can, like just, as I said, like save this into the shelf set and life will be a lot better. Okay, bye.